Hi all, in this video we're going to go over how to do a save as in VBA. It is actually quite complicated and so we're going to go through a runtime error, how to recalculate, actually create that so that you know how that works. Then we're going to go ahead and work on doing the code for a file picker which is awesome and we're going to go through five scenarios to make sure that that file picker is working based on the best best practice then we're going to finish this video with a timestamp how to save a file with a timestamp that's a really great way to do it because you're never going to have duplicates based on the way that we did it so hold tight for that it's good information we're going to go ahead and hit alt f11 it's going to take us to our visual basic editor i'm going to show you how to create a runtime error so this all this code does here is it makes a change so excel is going to show the warning the warning i'm talking about is this guy right here if i click no i get a runtime error if i hit cancel i also get a runtime error so a couple things on that um, you also can get a runtime error if that workbook is open because again all that code can do is just save a file so now let me show you how to override a file without a warning we've got a uh, make a change we're going to grab the path. I'm going to show you what that path looks like. That's the path where it's at. I'm going to add to that string just the extension. I'm going to turn the alerts off and then I'm going to show you this file exists right here. I'm going to F8, F8 again. You'll notice that I did not get a warning and it saved over. And I know that because my time changed here. So now you'll also know that I am no longer in that original file. My file name has changed. So if I went in and made a change here, changed it anywhere else in my code, that original workbook that I was on will not be saved. So let's go ahead and go over all of the scenarios in kind of the proper way to do a file dialog. So first thing we've got here is this is a, a breakpoint. Um, we're gonna use that in, in uh, some scenarios down here. That will make sense later. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up this application uh, it's the save file uh, save file so we're just going to save it as the default name and let me show you I'm going to show you something real quick kind of a trick there before we get to that you will notice that we can name these whatever we want so save file actually happens to be here default name which is right here Excel macro file that actually lives there and so you could name that whatever you wanted you could actually make it very confusing if you really wanted to don't recommend that but if you wanted to mess with your coworkers, that'd be a good way to do it so let's go back to our code we've got the debug print here which is going to print that the file name again we didn't make any changes to it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to go through scenario number one and scenario number one is what happens if we hit cancel so if I hit cancel what's going to happen is it's going to print false um, that's the file name and I'm going to at this point I would exit sub so that would take me out of the sub it would kick me all the way down here and I'd be done with my macro so that's scenario one so the first now what we're going to do is we're going to go and see if the we're going to go ahead and save this file based on what we've put it there now you'll notice that nothing's there Gonna hit save as and what it did is it went in and saved that file right through here so let's go through that again I'm gonna hit cancel because I want to put in some active scenarios here just putting in some breakpoints so that we can walk through each one of these so we did save that first file now you can see that that exists because it shows up here you'll also notice that my file changed again I am now default name without si saved file. I hit cancel on that, so let's run this again. It's going to pull this up. We're going to click save. It's going to say that that already exists. What do you want to do? Well, let's see what happened there. As it went through each line of code, it said, wait a sec, this directory um, is not equal to false I actually have that file so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you to a message box which is this file already exists with a yes no and cancel so I said I wanted to overwrite it so I'm just going to hit F um, F8 and it's going to walk me through each one of these it's going to save that file and I'm done so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what would happen I'm going to put a breakpoint there so that it makes a little sense we're going to go through scenario four, which is don't override, and we'll show you how to go back to the file override. So, okay, 
hit F5, this pulls up. I'm gonna click Save. It's a duplicate file. Do you, uh, do I wanna overwrite it? I'm gonna click No. What's gonna happen is it's gonna take me to the file dialog, which is right here, and then it's gonna to go to the next line, which is this one. So if I wanted to save this, I could come in here and put a one in, click Save, and it would go through and it would that file does not exist it would save the workbook and you'll notice that my file is now changed one more time so let's do the last scenario which is cancel so we're going to come in here we're going to save it as that we know that that exists we're going to hit cancel it's going to exit the sub and we are done. So that is the five scenarios that need to be considered when you're using a file dialog. Now the next one I wanna show you is how to create a file with a timestamp. And we're going to grab that file. We're going to strip off the extension and that's what this does here. So if we keep going, it's gonna print the file with no extension. And so what that's gonna look like is it's file-1 um, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add the date. We're going to add the time, and so we're going to have this file, no extension, and we're going to add the date. We're going to add the time. This format was important because you can't put colons and some other stuff. We're going to add XLSM, and because XLSM file type is 52, we're just going to save that file. Now, what does that look like? You'll notice that I've got a file right there, which is, you know, 1734. 17.34 seconds. So if I run this again, F5, it shows up again. Run that again, and you'll notice that it is uh, adding those the file extension. Now, the interesting thing here is it's going to add the, the save as, and it continued to add those pieces on. Now, if I was doing this from my default save file, I would never have those duplicates, so I'd have to strip that file out. So that would be something that we would need to do to improve this if we were going to just open up that most recent file and strip it out. Um, that could be a little bit of a challenge. We'd have to basically make sure that those last characters were numeric and fit in that formula. So that's what we would do then. But that gives you kind of a good start and a good direction as far as doing a save as uh, with a file format and also understanding the folder dialog.